Thank you. Peace be upon all of us and all our loved ones, including those that will soon be joining us. I have to come up with a some sort of a biblical quote now, but unfortunately it's one of my weakest. But I do know one that I can quote to you, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's uh, Isaiah 5. Woe is me. That, that's it. <laughs> but hasn't that been this gut feeling of us? All of us here, woe is we. Woe is we. But, paraphrasing a little bit down in this beautiful book, Isaiah 8. Here I am. Send me in. Are you ready? Are we ready to be sent in? Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. You will notice a candle at my feet. It is lit in beloved memory of the person that taught me to be welcoming, to be loving. Kim Biggs of blessed memory. It is Kim that we have to thank for many of the restaurants in our region. We have an a Olympic speed skater that taught our hockey team to do things on the ice that they never dreamed of. We have many, many employers. This valley has been blessed for decades now because of the work of Kim Biggs. I also have a, uh, at my feet a little bit of sage from my mother's house. May my words be a blessing to all of us. I just returned from Washington DC not long ago and a beautiful, beautiful, powerful woman noticed that I was very cold and she gave me some of her warmth in the form of an article of clothing. Another beautiful woman gave me a little safety pin when she heard that I was born in Guatemala, Guatemala, meaning that she was that little bit of safety for me. Another beautiful woman gave me a little heart cut out with the word love cut into it. Because if we don't do it in love and with love, we are not acting the way our Creator wants us to. With your permission, I have put all three things together. From over 750,000 of beautiful, powerful women, I bring you warmth, I bring you security, I bring you above all love for all of us to work together. In 1964, in an event just like this, 1964, there was a young woman, the wife of a minister, and she needed to do something about our increasing military presence throughout the world. 1964, and she went to a march, and she brought back pamphlets, and she brought back articles, and she brought back ideas. And wherever she went, she left them. If she went to the dentist, if she went to the market, if she went anywhere, she would leave these little articles. And she left some on her husband's desk. And when he read these, he had no choice but to write one of the most moving bits of literature, 1967, Beyond Vietnam, our beloved Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King, which effectively ended the war in Vietnam. Never say, I'm just one person. Never leave an event like this without finding a group to join. Create a group. Make sure you find the group that is distributing this bit of literature that tells you exactly how you can help. Make sure you go online and find the document known as Indivisible. I have been to at least at least a dozen events like this and everywhere it has started through Indivisible. Find it, share it, duplicate it. One of the little bits that I drop wherever I go, it says, were you aware that we the taxpayers in 2016 dropped over 26,170 
different bombing raids. And I put on it, why? What that tax money could have done to our schools, to our education, to our health care. I wish today to have someone in my place from Black Lives Matter be here. Because the first thing that I would say, this horrible feeling deep inside me has only been a few days. This has been your reality for hundreds of years. Show us the way. Show us how to survive this. I wish that instead of me up here was someone from Standing Rock. And I would ask them, generation after generation of knowing that your government's word is worthless, knowing that everything possible is being done militaristically to destroy you, your culture, and your faith. And it's only been a few days for me. We know that our war profiteering is creating refugees and immigration patterns all over the world. It is the war profiteer who takes our taxes from job creation to war. It is our tax dollars that are going to never ending wars and denying us health care. It is our banging of the drums through our tax dollars that is doing away with our affordable education. Our enemies are not those the poorest of the world. Our enemies are those that have infected our executive branch. Those that are not concerned with school to prison pipelines, Betsy DeVos, and her corporation K through 12 that has siphoned and closed over 40 school districts to funnel them into her for-profit. Her online predatory student loan system under investigation. The person that will soon possibly, if we remain silent, be in charge of climate check. Rex Tillerson, the chief of ExxonMobil. If there's something that all of us have to realize is that we have less than two years to do away with voter suppression, gerrymandering, and all of the illegal tactics. Yeah. We can do it. Don't forget the Supreme Court nominee. The Supreme Court nominee. By the way, people have been looking over his judicial record to see his stance on immigration, and it's very, very close, just a little bit tilting towards being anti-immigrant, but it's very, very close. However, what is not close at all are his rulings that have to do with militarized police violence. It is his belief that militarized police have the authority and the right to kill you without due process because it is part of their qualified definition. The police in this country have the rights to Through food insecurity, we have over 18 million homes where the children will go to bed hungry tonight. We throw away more than 50% of the food that we make. And yet, if we are not vigilant, Sonny Purdue will be the person of Purdue Chickens, one of the greatest criminals of the food industry, will be the person that decides what food is, what agriculture is, what is natural in our food. He will be the person that is in charge of the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program that is one of the few last remaining straws for starving children. But to me, of all of these horrible cancers that are within our executive branch right now, the worst is the national white nationalist. And this is a quote from Steve Bannon's own radio program. If we are not vigilant, this is our chief of staff. Darkness is good. Darth Vader is good. Satan is good. That's power. It only helps us when they 
get it wrong. Now, who are they that he's referring to? We are they. As long as they remain blind to who we are and what we are doing, we will be going to war in the South China Seas. The media should keep its mouth shut. Some of these institutions may get a little unpleasant, but as you know, after all, we are going to war. We are clearly going to a major shooting war in the Middle East. One of the things that I believe is the greatest danger is what I refer to as liquid loneliness. And that is someone that is so alone that they have nothing in their life, no love, no respect, and that the only thing that they can do is stay up at night and tweet. Wow. <laughs> if I may, call upon our loving mother and her child born in Bethlehem, refugees forced to flee violence. May we be as ever vigilant as those that profit from war. Are we ready to be sent in? Isaiah 8. Here I am, send me in Lord. Thank you.